Good morning. We welcome you to our service this morning. Glad all of you were here braving the rainy weather that's supposed to be with us uh, for most of the day, I'm afraid. But we're glad you're here and we're excited about all the Lord has to share with us as we lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ together. Just wanted to mention a couple things by way of announcement. Uh, you'll notice we have uh, flowers on the altar this morning. They are beginning our altar flower program, and you'll see at the top of the inside page of your bulletin, uh, this service and the altar flowers are dedicated to honor uh, Jack Barbie on his birthday. So we are excited to begin our program recognizing Jack this morning. Also wanted to mention, uh, we are starting, we're kind of expanding our Sunday school program a bit. Uh, we have been doing, in fact, uh, the book of Acts is 28 chapters, and we have, uh, well, as of today, uh, the book of Acts will be completed uh, as our uh, initial Sunday school offering since we got back together. We've been meeting in the sanctuary shortly after the worship service. Uh, beginning next Sunday, we will start the book of Matthew, and we're also going to be expanding Sunday school a little bit. Uh, what we wanted to try and do is offer our classes an opportunity to get together for some fellowship time. And I talked with the Sunday school group last Sunday to kind of confirm this, and I've been in touch with the leaders of all the classes. They've been in contact with their uh, class members, and all three classes said uh, they would like to have uh, start back with the time of fellowship. So what we're going to do beginning next Sunday, as soon as church is over, uh, for those of you that are members of a Sunday school class, you can be dismissed to your class for a period of about 20 minutes. And that'll just be a time to kind of get reacquainted, talk about things that are going on in the group, uh, take attendance. And then at about 10.15, uh, the class will, will dismiss from their classrooms and come back in here. So we will continue our joint Sunday school study. But we want to give our classes a chance to get back together and uh, begin reestablish a fellowship as a Sunday school class. So that will start next Sunday. I don't know if I'm... That came across clear or not, I hope it did, but we're excited about the opportunity to let our classes get reestablished, uh, that fellowship that has been uh, kind of dismantled almost for the last year. We're excited to try and reinstate it and get people connected with each other again, so we're looking forward to that, so that'll begin next Sunday. Um, also, just wanted to bring to your attention uh, the insert in the bulletin. Uh, we are continuing. If you would like to sign up for altar flowers uh, on a given Sunday or if you'd like to uh, order an Easter lily in honor and memory of someone for this coming Easter Sunday, you may do that uh, with the insert. Uh, drop it in the offering plate on your way out and just remember on the memo line of your check to put uh, Easter lily or altar flowers. So we are excited to offer you that opportunity as well. And another nice little tidbit this morning, we're happy to welcome for one day and one appearance only, Chelsea's back to play the piano for us this morning and we're excited to have her. She's here on her, I guess it's spring break, for lack of a better word, even though officially she doesn't have a spring break, she's here for spring break. So we're, she's uh, taking her courses remotely this week and we're glad to have her with us this morning to... Uh, come share in our music program here today. Okay, I think that's all I have at this time. I'll turn it over to Stephanie for the rest of our announcements. Thanks, Pastor Randy. We do have a few new announcements. If you look in your bulletin, um, just uh, to remind you that the SPRC meeting will be this week, this Thursday. So if you're a member of that, I'm sure you will attend. And then the Evangelism Committee will also meet this week. It's going to meet on Friday uh, at 1 p.m. And then if you'll look down, we're still collecting money um, for the school supplies. And if you would like to make a donation for our sanctuary banners, you can do that. And then, of course, the planning is already underway for the 100th anniversary of the church. And Warren Food Bank is still collecting mac and cheese, which all people like to eat. So um, bring that. Do we have any other announcements? Any other announcements from the congregation? 
Yes, ma'am? Hello. I would like to clarify about the food bank. Since the uh, food bank meets the second Saturday of each month, we get the food over there the week before. So starting today, we're going to announce the next food item, which is green beans and rice. So that way uh, we can get started for the whole month. Thank you. So we need to bring cans of green beans and then bags of rice to help them out. Okay, we can do that. Any other announcements? Any other announcements? Will you heed the call to preparation? Sing praises to God, all you saints, and give thanks to God's holy name. We exalt you, O God, for you have restored us to life. Our souls cannot be silent. We give thanks to you forever. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. The hour comes and now is when every true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks those to worship him. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to gather together and lift up our hearts in praise of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for our time together. We ask that you would bless our fellowship and our worship. In everything we do, may Jesus Christ receive all the honor and the glory and the praise. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 6 together. Let us stand as we sing. standing as we affirm our faith and this affirmation comes from Romans 8 35 37 through 39 who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword no, no. In, in all things, things we are more, more than, than conquerors, conquerors through, through the, the ones who loved us, us. We, we are, are sure, sure that, that neither death, death nor life 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. may be seated. It's at this time in our service where we share our joys and concerns. And so do we have any concerns from the congregation? Any concerns? And we want to remind you to um, look at the bulletin, maybe put it on your refrigerator, put it by your cell phone or your computer so when you go to it, you will remember these families and their caregivers in your prayers. We keep this updated so this is just a good prayer list to add to our daily prayers no concerns what about joys do we have any joys i have a joy that there are people up here singing behind me today so thank you very much you're more than welcome to come any week and join us up here so pastor i think that's it Let's bow together for prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so very blessed to have this opportunity to join our hearts together and to come into your presence in prayer. We recognize that we are not worthy of your amazing love for us, so we humbly come before your throne. We confess to you all of our sins. We ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse us in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Prepare our hearts to be the disciples that you've called us to be. Lord, our hearts are burdened this morning for those in need among us, for the unspoken requests on our hearts as well as those listed in our bulletin. We thank you and praise you that you are our great physician. You know and understand our needs even before we bring them before your throne. And your Holy Spirit is already at work, moving among us, touching and healing hearts and lives. We thank you for the many answers to prayer that we've experienced as individuals and as a congregation, recognizing that you are always at work among us. We thank you for your many blessings upon us, and we thank you for our church family and the opportunities we have to share with one another and share the love that you've put in our hearts with those around us. And now, as Jesus taught his disciples, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is that time in our service for our tithes and offerings. Again, as we go through this time of COVID, if you would like to leave your offering, we have an offering plate in the back of the sanctuary as well as one uh, where you come in the door in the fellowship hall. Uh, always an opportunity for you to give. And again, I just, I've said this a number of times, but it certainly bears repeating. I just want to thank all of you that have so faithfully given, even through this difficult time. We've not had nearly the number of people we normally have in church, but, uh, this congregation has faithfully given and we've been able to continue to pay all our bills for one thing, but also to continue 
uh, the ministries of the church. So again, thank you for your gifts. I just wanted to mention that uh, there are a couple opportunities for those that are watching us online uh, for you to be able to pay because you aren't able yet to come back to church. So take advantage of those opportunities as well. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings upon us. As we walk with you moment by moment, day by day, we thank you that you provide for our every need. You are there even when we don't recognize your hand of love working right with us. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. And so we thank you now for this opportunity to give back to you. Bless these our tithes and offerings. May they be used to bring honor and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us stand together for the doxology. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise. Tell me the stories of Jesus. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3 together. Tell me. You may be seated. And now it's a treat for us this morning to have uh, Chelsea share some special music with us. Test, test, test. Okay, good. <clears throat> good morning. It's good, to, good morning. it's good to be here with all of you. It's good to see all your faces again. Um, yeah, uh, the song I'm going to be playing is a um, little bit more of the contemporary variety. Um, it's called Who You Say I Am. Who am I that the highest king 
would welcome me. I was lost when he brought me and know oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, his free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. Please stand in honor of God's holy word. Our scripture reading today comes from the New Testament. It comes from Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20. Some very familiar words to us. Now, when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth, you will bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then sternly he ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. Let's bow together for a moment of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. Open our spiritual eyes and ears 
that we may see and hear your truth for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody forgot to tell the chimes that we moved our schedule up an hour, so that's why it's playing. As we continue our Lenten series this morning called Journey of Stones, I hope each of you uh, picked up a stone on your way in, uh, because at the end of each sermon, the end of each service, uh, you will have an opportunity, a choice, to leave your stone which represents sin in your life at the foot of the cross. Laying your sin at the foot of the cross represents your desire to be free from that sin and learn to live a holy life before God. A fifth grade math class was studying estimating. The teacher brought to class a large jar of ping pong balls. He passed the jar around the class and told the students to try and guess how many ping pong balls were in the jar. After everyone had seen uh, the jar and had a chance to do an estimate, (coughs) the teacher asked for volunteers to share their guesses. Immediately, one boy raised his hand and said, 40, there's 40 ping pong balls in that jar. The rest of the class was silent. Then one girl slowly raised her hand and she said she thought there were about 25 ping pong balls in the jar. Anyone else want to estimate? No responses. So the teacher announced that there were 40 ping pong balls in that jar. That first boy stood up, pumped his fist, And he was all excited because he got the right answer. So then the teacher asked the girl, how did you arrive at your answer? And she said, the balls were stacked about five layers high. And I looked on the bottom and they were five balls on the bottom of the jar. So I took five times five and I got 25. And he said, I think that was an excellent way to try and estimate the balls in the jar. So then he asked the boy who got the right answer, how did you arrive at your estimate? The boy responded with a big grin on his face. Yesterday was my father's birthday and he turned 40. So I thought that would be a good number to guess for the ping pong balls in the jar. Well, unfortunately, uh, that teacher's Lesson on estimating kind of went over like a lead balloon. Didn't quite go as he had planned, but uh, because the wild guess won over the calculated estimate. When I, re- when I read that story not too long ago, I was reminded of a children's sermon I did one time. I had the kids all sitting down in front of me, and I said, uh, let me ask you a question. What's gray and climbs trees and eats acorns? No response whatsoever. So I said, okay, well, here's a hint. They have furry tails and sometimes they sit on their hind legs to eat their acorns in their hands. Finally, one of the kids kind of slowly raised his hand and said... Jesus, (laughs) I was going to say squirrel, but usually the answer to all your questions is Jesus, so I thought I'd go with what I thought would be the right answer. So sometimes all the teaching we try to do just sometimes uh, doesn't go through the way we hoped. So our scripture this morning tells us that even Jesus had problems with teaching on some of the things that he wanted the disciples to learn. So Jesus begins by asking the question, who do people say that I am? And on this one, the disciples were quick to respond and they said, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, and they mentioned other prophets. But when Jesus asked the next question, who do you say that I am? First, there was a silence, and then, and I I liken Peter to the boy in the class that guessed 40. 
I can see Peter going now. Ooh, 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 I know, I know. Peter says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Well, the reason the other disciples were hesitant to say anything is because they knew that by speaking those words, if they were overheard by anyone, especially the leaders uh, of Israel, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, etc., they would be in big trouble because that would be considered blasphemy. So Peter was the only one who was willing to speak out and say what he believed. Or maybe, we don't know because it doesn't say, maybe he was just saying what he thought Jesus wanted to hear. But that's a problem that Jesus faced when he was teaching. And the problem kind of raises a question for us. What do we say when we talk about Jesus? Or maybe the question should be, do we talk about Jesus? I kind of feel like uh, as pastor and the person who has to get up and give a sermon every Sunday and you get to listen to different scriptures and then hear what I have to say about it, like I'm doing right now. Um, you have plenty of opportunity and plenty of information to work with, but I'm not sure how many people actually use that information in their daily lives. I just have no way of knowing, actually. But it's easy for us here this morning to hear the words of the Scripture, to have an explanation and to feel like we have an understanding of, maybe a little bit of understanding about what the Bible says. But there's a problem we have here in church. And that is, we are so used to hearing about God in the context of church, we lose sight of the fact that we use language, I like to call it Christian ease that most people outside the church don't even understand. Let me give you an example. Pick up your bulletin and tell me how many people outside the church would know what the call to preparation means. Or how about the call to worship? Or the invocation? Or the affirmation of faith? Or the, here's a good one, the Gloria Patri or the doxology. Even when we say, sing our opening hymn or hymn of praise, most people aren't going to know what a hymn is. Now we don't have them right now, but normally we have our hymnals in the pew in front of us. So when we are told a hymn and a hymn number, we know exactly what to do. But you realize that most people outside of this building, well, maybe, I, except maybe other Methodist churches, uh, aren't going to know and understand this terminology, and yet it's something that we are very familiar with and we use uh, in normal conversation, especially with each other. And so we have potentially a communication problem. Just as the fifth grade math teacher and me in my children's sermon and Jesus in our scripture this morning, sometimes we are not communicating exactly uh, what people need to hear. See, Jesus realized that the disciples heard what Peter had to say and maybe they agreed with him or not, we don't know. But Jesus knew that Peter had no idea when he said those words what those words meant. And so he began to teach from the speaking of those words. Now one of the passages in our scripture this morning that uh, has been debated over the centuries uh, is verse 18. And Jesus said, and I tell you, you are Peter, 
And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Some have interpreted that to mean that Peter is the rock that the church is built on. But I believe that what Jesus is saying is Peter's confession is what the church is built on. That's the foundation of everything we believe, that Jesus Christ is our Messiah, Son of the living God. And that is uh, what our church is built on. But I believe Jesus was not referring to a building, not referring to Peter himself, but he was referring to the foundation of the church. Because that's what makes up the church, those who confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now let me talk about our confession this morning for just a minute. Can we put our salvation experience, because that is the common denominator of why we come to church. This is a, basically a fellowship of believers. Obviously we have visitors that come and people that may not know, but it's our opportunity to share with them what we believe. But for most of us who have already made a choice about Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior... Can we put into words what our salvation really means? Very simply stated, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we'll start with the word Savior, means that we recognize Jesus is the only one who is responsible for wiping away the penalty of our sin before God. We are all sinners. Unfortunately, none of us even becomes perfect, let alone is perfect. And so by this definition of sinners, we are constantly breaking God's law. And we have to recognize that only through God's forgiveness of our sins can we ever hope to have a relationship with our Creator. Jesus Christ has offered himself as our Savior, the person who can save us from the penalty of our sin. And so that's who our Savior is and what that salvation means. Now here's another important word that's always linked together, Lord and Savior. What does it mean when we say Jesus is our Lord? Well, the problem is we might be able to explain that Jesus created us and we can say that everything we have comes from Jesus and everything that we do is at the behest of Jesus. Literally, we, if Jesus is our Lord, we are his servants. And what does that mean? Well, that means when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are acknowledging that our lives no longer belong to us. They belong to God. He is now the ruler of our lives. He is our Lord. He is the one who created us and he is the one who directs us, gives us purpose, calls us by name, chooses us for his mission. So that means he owns everything, and literally, we own nothing, although we tend to get caught up in the things that we don't really own that we think we own. And so understanding the very simple terms of Jesus as our Lord and Savior 
means that our lives, at the time we claim that title, our lives should be changed forever. The problem is, when we share that with someone else, They're the ones that get to look into our soul, if they know us, and determine whether or not that is true in us. Do we believe that Jesus has forgiven our sins, and do we believe that he is our Lord, and he is the one who created us and chooses for us how He wants us to live our lives. Are we living that truth? Well, unfortunately, that prevents many of us from being willing to share our faith because by sharing what we believe, we are holding ourselves accountable to something that we may feel like we haven't truly done. So that brings us to our stone this morning. This stone is a little different than the other stones that we've had during our sermon series. This stone represents your confession of faith. So what is the church? The church is a place where we gather to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We gather to fellowship and we gather to worship. But our confession is that we believe Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. So here's your challenge this morning as we close the service. As you take your stone and as we give you the opportunity to pass by the cross... If you want to leave your stone at the foot of the cross, that means you are choosing to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life. If you choose not to leave your stone and put it in your pocket or take it with you, that means you are choosing to continue to not let people know about your faith. Not allowing your confession of your faith to be a part of your testimony of who you are and how you live your life. So this stone represents your confession. If you lay it at the foot of the cross, you're telling the Lord, I want my faith to be a part of who I am and I want my confession to be public. If you take it with you, then you're saying, I'm not quite ready to go there yet. I'm not quite ready to go public with my faith. Too many people out there who might want to make fun of me or get angry with me or do something that I might not like. So I'm not ready yet to confess my faith. But if you're ready to confess your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, I want to challenge you to place your stone at the foot of the cross. So this morning, as we close our service, I'm going to give the benediction in just a moment, and then our closing hymn, our hymn of invitation, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross. As we begin to sing, uh, one of our ushers will come to the front, and you'll be just socially dismissed pew by pew. You'll have the opportunity to walk uh, from the center aisle, pass the cross, drop off your stone if you choose, and then exit through the Uh, side aisle and into the fellowship hall. Uh, Just a reminder, we will be having Sunday school uh, here in the sanctuary about 10 to 15 minutes after uh, our uh, service is over. Let's bow together for prayer. Lord, we thank you this morning for this opportunity to recognize, acknowledge, and speak our confession of faith. We thank you that you are our Lord and Savior. 
May we not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and living it out amongst those family and friends around us. We thank you and praise you for your faithfulness to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.